Hello, and welcome to another art video. But before we get to our art project, I'd like to talk to you about a very important Peaceful Schools concept. Now, Peaceful Schools and I both believe that we all have the power to be peaceful, and that we all have this very special power that we can use to help achieve that. And that is called your star power. Star power is the ability to stop think and act with respect. This is one of the biggest concepts of peaceful schools because it takes all of the other things that we like to teach about and kind of rolls it all into one. We have to use our self-control to be able to stop or pause even when we're feeling big emotions. Then we use everything we know about conflict resolution and making the right choice to think about what to do next. And then we act with respect towards ourselves, others, and the environment around us, getting a win-win-win while maintaining our community, our identity, our healthy relationships, and our peace. All that being said, I know that for myself, the hardest part of using my star power is the stopping and thinking parts. So today we're going to make an art project that's going to help us with that. Today we are going to make some worry stones. Worry stones can be seen being used by cultures throughout history, as far back as the ancient Greeks or Native Americans. It's this idea that by rubbing a stone in between our pointer finger and our thumb, it can make our worries go away and bring a sense of calm. There are even scientific studies that show that there are some pressure points and lots of nerves close to the skin that when we rub something like a stone, it can release endorphins from our brain that make us feel calm. So if we make this worry stone to use while using our star power, it will help us be calm so we can think clearly about what best to do next. I'm going to bring you through four different methods of how to make stones and then one method of how to decorate it. Now, all these recipes that I found to make our stones, I found on different websites and they're recipes to make large quantities so you can make like big clay projects. So I cut them down and made them very small since we're only making our small worry stones. If you want to make a lot and you want the original recipe, feel free to go to that website and see what they have for you. Okay, let's get started. Our first method of making our worry stones is a type of air dried clay that we're not going to use any heat at all. What you'll need is 3 eighths a cup of cornstarch, a quarter cup of white liquid glue, a quarter teaspoon of lotion, and then slightly less than a teaspoon of white vinegar and slightly less than a teaspoon of baby oil. I didn't have baby oil so you'll see I use canola oil um, and it worked pretty good. Mix all of your ingredients in a bowl until smooth. If it seems too sticky, add small amounts of cornstarch. You'll know you've added enough when it becomes difficult to mix more in. I definitely needed to add a lot more cornstarch. Put some cornstarch on your countertop and your hands and then knead the dough. Continue to add cornstarch if it still feels sticky, but stop before the clay feels dry and stiff. But if you get that far, just add a little more baby oil. And now form your project. You can see it's not very solid, so it's a little hard to make a specific shape. I want a spot for my thumb, so I'm going to try to make a thumbprint in the center so it fits my hand. This recipe asks for you to air dry your clay for about two days, so you'll need to place it on some parchment or wax paper and leave it alone to dry. Our next method for making our worry stones is another type of clay, but we are gonna have to use heat for this, so please ask a parent or guardian or big brother or sister to help you out. What we're gonna use is a quarter cup of baking soda, one tablespoon of cornstarch, or and three tablespoons of water. Mix all of your ingredients right in a pot that you can use on the stove. Put that pot on the stove at medium-high heat and stir. Once it starts bubbling, reduce your heat to medium and keep stirring until your mixture becomes thick. Then you can remove it from the heat and let it cool in a bowl. 
When it's cooled and you're ready to make your project, you can put baking soda on your surface first so that your clay doesn't stick. For this recipe, you can choose to bake or air dry your project. If you want to let it air dry, set it on some parchment paper and set aside. If you want to bake it, it also needs to go on some parchment paper on a baking sheet, and I'll give you the rest of those instructions in a little bit. The third method for our worry stones is salt dough. What we're gonna use for this is an eighth a cup of flour, an eighth a cup of salt, one tablespoon of warm water, and then we also have the option to add some, what I'm calling smelly spices, to our dough to make it smell nice. Mix the flour, salt, and spices together in a bowl. The spices make it smell nice, but they do change the color a bit. Then add the warm water. If it feels too solid, add a little more water. If it feels too wet, add a little more flour. I'm going to make the same thumbprint shape, but also try to use a small cookie cutter this time. Again, with this recipe, you have the choice to either let it air dry or bake it. And our last method for making our worry stones is just to go outside. Venture outdoors to look for a rock that feels nice between your fingers. I would suggest to then wash it and if it's dark, maybe paint it with a layer of white paint so that we can see our decorations when we get to that part. If you're using method two or three and you want to bake your project, set it on parchment paper on a baking sheet and put it in the oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. After an hour, you're going to want to carefully flip your projects and bake for another hour for a total time of two hours. Remember to ask for help from an adult when using the oven. If you'd like to air dry your project, set it in a safe place on some parchment paper. This helps it to not stick to the surface. Wait about a day and then flip your project. Then you'll have to wait some more time for it to completely dry. I found that methods one and two dried a lot faster, but the salt dough in method three needed about three days total to be completely dry. Now it is time to decorate our worry stones. You can decorate it many different ways. Maybe you'll choose just to draw on it with markers or paint with a paintbrush, but I am also going to show you right now a technique called water marbling. What you'll need to do, do this is your worry stone, a cup or a bowl that is wide enough to fit your stone and your fingers, water, I'm gonna use nail polish, and then a toothpick. Okay, so I wanted to take a second to show you my results from all four methods. Um, they all work pretty well. You can see my air dry salt dough is still, if I stick my nail in there, it still pushes so it actually still needs some more time to air dry. Everything else looks like it did pretty well. Method one flattened a lot during that first dry, um, but it's nice and smooth now. Both of these, I like the way they feel. I think for air drying, number two is my favorite method. Um, it kept, kept its shape and dried pretty quickly. But the bake worked out well as well for number two. And then the bake for the salt dough worked really well as well. Um, and it does smell very nice. I wish you could smell it through the camera. And then of course we've got our wonderful rocks that we painted. But I've got my water and toothpicks and my wonderful rainbow of nail polish. So we're gonna get started with the water marbling. Fill your container with water. Drop small amounts of nail polish onto the surface of the water. Depending on the nail polish, you might see it spread out or just stay a small circle on the surface. Keep adding whatever colors you like and then use a toothpick to swirl the colors around. This is going to make the marbling effect. And when you get a pattern you like, dip the top of your worry stone into the water. When you bring it out, the nail polish will stick to the stone and you can see your fun pattern. Repeat this as many times as you like. If your nail polish hasn't dried on the surface of the water, you can reuse what you have, maybe adding just a little more nail polish. 
bore, you can use a toothpick, swirl it all around, and it will pick up the leftover nail polish so you can start fresh again. Okay, so here are my final painted worry stones. I tried to do lots of different colors. I really had a lot of fun doing this. I've got kind of a mess. It's all over my fingers. Um, so I've got some cleaning to do, but I'm just gonna let these dry, possibly put a clear coat on top of them to protect them a little bit, and then I can use them for my worry stones. So remember to use your star power to stop Think and act with respect towards yourself, others, and your environment around you. And now you can use your worry stone to help calm your thoughts and clear your mind so that you can think better about how best to act. I hope you enjoy making your stone. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.